Yo, 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 what's up, party people? This is DJ Prey C, and we're gonna have some fun. So let me see your move. Moving to the beat with my groove and feet. That's right. Moving to the beat with my groove and feet. I said, come on. Moving to the beat with my groove and feet. Come on, come on. Moving to the beat with my groove and feet. Here we go. Slide to the left. Now slide to the right. Jump up two times and turn around. Let's do it again. Come on, slide to the left. Now slide to the right. Jump up two times and turn around. Come on, let's dance. Come on. Let me see you move. Disco eyes. Gonna jump four times. Here we go. Now freeze. Do, do, do the disco eyes. Gonna jump four times. Hey, come on, let's dance. Come on. Let me see you move.
Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Kids Rock online Sunday service here in the Cornerstone department. It's so good to be back to see your faces and to talk to you guys again. I really hope that you guys have been doing well um, and I really hope that no one's um, you know, gotten sick or ill or that no one is so sick or ill right now. If you are, then I hope and pray that you get better soon. All right, so... Um, yeah, it's already the month of May, right? Because today is May 2nd, right? Uh, it's the first Sunday of this month. And of course, that means we have a new theme, which I will get to in a moment. But, you know, it's already May. I mean, let's rewind back a year, um, right? And so, like, this whole pandemic situation started, you know, like, to get really big, you know, in March, April, and May. Um, of course, we had heard of the COVID situation before then, you know, January, February, but it wasn't until like, you know, March, April, and then May where people, governments, you know, people over the world realize, okay, this, you know, COVID thing isn't going away and we're not gonna be able to contain it just to one area, one country, one continent. It's already pretty much all around the world. And so ever since then, we've been in this situation for, you know, uh, over a year now 
and wow it's 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 impacted the global world in so many different ways right um and so now we're here and you know there's been a lot of difficulties a lot of hardships a lot of um you know problems and troubles for different people but you know we're still here right we're still here we're still going we're still moving on we're still going strong and it's because one way or another we are committed now what we're what are we committed to well first of all i think we're most of us uh, are committed to life right we're committed to uh, continue living and continue to do what we need to do and what we can do and so we're here and so that takes me to the theme of the month which is commitment now what is you know commitment um, and you know a simple definition of commitment would be um, to be dedicated to something right uh, some synonyms some words similar to commitment you know if you're if you're dedicated or if you're loyal if you're faithful if you stick to something uh, and even if it's difficult or hard you're going to be committed and with the theme of commitment obviously we want to talk about one of the most I mean really the, the most important thing right that we needed to be committed to uh, as followers of Jesus and yes that's yeah we're we need to be committed to Jesus but you know what does that really look like and you know practically speaking um, what does that mean what does it look like and so before we go on I would like to ask you guys a really simple question okay and so you know just think about it talk with your siblings um, the question is if a person wants to be really good at something right if you want to be really good at something and when I say really good at something I kind of mean like if you want to be considered a professional a pro right and in Korean we say we call that tonmunga, right so if you want to be really good if you want to be a pro a professional at something how much time do you have to spend how much time do you have to commit all right so think about that talk about it and I'll see you guys soon Okay, so welcome back, and I'm sure you guys have thought of something, maybe you even discussed it with your siblings or someone else. Well, here, let me um, share with you guys this thing called the 10,000 hour rule. And of course, I'm not saying that this rule is you know, always true or correct, no. But what this is the 10,000 hour rule. So they say, generally speaking, if you wanna be really good at something or be a pro, you, need to, you gotta spend like at least 10,000 hours, right? So 10,000 hours, hmm, that's a lot of hours, but it's kind of hard to wrap our head around because, you know, that's so many hours and in, in one day there's only 24 hours. So let me break it down for you. Let's say you spend four hours every day at whatever it is that you're trying to be good at or trying to be a pro, okay? So four hours every single day. To reach 10,000 hours, it will take 2,500 days. Yes, that's correct. But, you know, 2,500 days, that's a lot. So let me break it down for you guys again. That's roughly around seven years. Wow. I know, right? Seven years of training, practicing, working at it every single day, and you hit 10,000 hours. But you know what? Like I said, 10,000 hours, it's just, you know, a saying. It's a rule. It's a saying, right? But let me be real here. If you want to be a doctor and, you know, a really good doctor and you're specialized in a certain like category and you be really, really good, it's going to take at least 40,000 hours of learning and training. That's right. 40,000 hours. I mean, if, I mean, I mean, and you were not even including all the other times that what you will need. You you have to go to college and you have to go to grad school and all that stuff. And so Including all that, it's going to be more than 40,000 hours. Do you know how many years 40,000 hours is, guys? That's 27 
years. 27 years. I mean, think about it. For most of you guys, you guys aren't even close to 27, right? In fact, for all of you guys, you guys aren't even like halfway there to 27, right? Which is crazy, right? But I mean, that's a good thing for you guys because that means you guys have a, your whole life ahead of you. You guys have more time, well, at least more than I do, right? Uh, because I'm a lot older than you guys. But Anyway, so it just shows that it takes a lot of time, a crazy amount of time and commitment, right? Because you have to be committed to spend that many hours, that many days, that many years to try and be good at something or be a professional. You know, so there's many different reasons for why you want to be good at something or you want to be a professional, right? Uh, maybe it's your dream job, right? Maybe you've always wanted to become a doctor or a musician or, or an athlete. Maybe you enjoy it. Right, you really enjoy it, and you really liked it, and you spent a lot of time. Or maybe um, you think if you if you become good at it, then it will bring you benefits. Right, uh, that you I, just for example, like you know, a lot of people they want to be good at certain things because they think it will make them popular, or they think people will like them more, or you know, stuff like that. You know, it's real. There can be so many different reasons for why we want to be good at something, or why we commit so many time. So, many, so much of our time in doing something. And, well, of course, I, I want to talk about commitment when it comes to living our lives as Christians, as followers and believers of Jesus. What does it mean to be committed to Jesus? What does it mean to live a life of commitment in God, in Jesus? What does it mean and what does it look like? Well, before we go on, let us look in the Bible and let's see what the Apostle Paul has to say about this. I mean, the Bible has a lot of things to say about this, but, um, you know, we, it's not like we have infinite time. So today we're going to look at uh, a few verses in 1 Corinthians uh, by the Apostle Paul. So get your Bibles. If you have Bibles, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Wow. Uh, you know, the Apostle Paul, you know, you, is talking about a race. He's talking about athletes. I mean, what's going on? Was the Apostle Paul an athlete? Was he a racer, a runner? Not exactly, right? So the Apostle Paul is giving us an image here. He's trying to... Um, show us and tell us through imagery and through the use of you know words and pictures that we know right because all of us know even if we're not into sports we know what athletes are what they're about we know what running is we know what a race is right and you know the apostle paul talks about really important things a few important really important things here but i want to talk about two really big things today two big takeaways and the first is this you know, the Apostle Paul, he's comparing our life to this race. And why is this important? Well, here's the thing. As Christians, our whole lives, just living out our life, we're supposed to do this with Jesus, with God. All right. So kids, this is something really important that you should know. You know, we, when you know when people think about Christians or you know some people think about what a follower of G like Jesus is they think oh yeah they go to church you know they do this thing called prayer and worship you know they they do small groups bible studies yeah and, and that's about it and then after that 
other than that, you know, they just have their own life. Uh, we, we call, and we, um, if you take it to the extreme, we call that the Sunday Christian, right? What do we mean when we say the Sunday Christian, guys? It means, oh yeah, so that person, he's a Christian on Sunday. Only on Sundays, though. Like on Sunday, he goes to church, um, he watches his language, um, he doesn't do like the bad stuff that you're not supposed to do. Um, but then on Monday, he's back to his normal, usual self. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, he's back to his, you know, job, back to his school. He's he just, you know, he's just a regular person. But then on Sunday, he has to be holy, right? And guys, that is just, that's totally missing the point, right? To be a follower of Jesus, it you know, to be committed to a life of following Jesus means that every day we're supposed to walk with God, right? Our life, our actions, our words, our choices, all those things need to reflect and show that we are followers of Jesus, not just on Sundays, right? And, you know, you know, people think, oh, if you go to church, you're a Christian. Well, guess what? There are people who go to church and have never missed going to church on Sundays, and they might not be Christian, right? Because think about it. You don't have to be a Christian to go to church. You don't have to be a Christian to read the Bible. Anyone can read the Bible. In fact, there are lots of people who are against Christianity who read the Bible and have memorized a lot of the like verses and they know all the Bible stories. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? It's not just about what we do. Of course, what we do is really important. But what but also what's really important is what's going on in our hearts. What's our intentions. Why are we going to church? Why are we praying? Right? It, there has to be, Jesus and God has to be at the center of our lives. I mean, that's why we're doing, we're doing it for Jesus. We're doing it because we love Jesus. We're doing it because God loved us first. He saved us. And now he's, he's called us to be his children. And so that's the first thing, right? Action is really important, but so it is the intention, the reason, the heart, right? Um, the second thing, the second thing I want to talk about is, you know, practice, right? Right now, I just, you know, we, I talked about intention, but the practice and the action is really important as well. Um, for example, when your parents, you know, they tell you to study, do your homework, uh, they tell you to clean your room, do your chores, those things are all really important. Your parents are teaching you, guiding you, instructing you, telling you to do things that is going to help you with your life and hopefully help you be successful in, you know, whatever it is that you do. And, you know, it, the, and it's, it's kind of like basically disciplining you. It really is. And it's training you. And this is going to be really important because making good habits and having good practices really helps. Um, now, of course, like I said, we can't do it alone, right? We can't be the perfect Christian, you know, we're, we're human and we're sinners. And we need Jesus, we need God's help, we need his grace, and we need his mercy. That's an absolute. But at the same time, there are things that we can do to help ourselves and, and do things that can um, make it easier for us. Because... You know, if you have bad practices or bad habits, it's really easy to fall to temptation. It's really easy to fall and stumble, do things that you shouldn't do, that you're not supposed to do, that, you know, and stuff like that. So all those things, right, whether even if it's difficult, even if it requires patience and time. You know, because honestly, if, you know, studying for, you know, a long time, doing all your homework um, and, you know, trying your best, it's not easy. And it's it can be very difficult, very hard. I mean, I, I'm, I have to take a, a final exam in my classical Greek language class next week. And boy, I got to tell you... Um, it's a lot of stuff going on, like the grammar and the vocab is trying to memorize all of that. You know, it's almost driving me crazy, right? Because of, of the amount of information that I'm trying to memorize and learn. So, I mean, trust me when I say I know how you guys feel, I, I do. Because I had to go through a lot of things that you guys are going through right now. And so, it's not going to be easy. And the Bible doesn't 
tell us that it's going to be easy, right? The Bible doesn't say, Jesus never says, oh, if you become my follower, life is going to be easy, you're going to be rich, you're going to have everything you want. No, the Bible doesn't tell us that. But the Bible does tell us, right? Jesus does tell us that we can bring our burdens, our hardships, our loneliness, our pain, our sufferings. We can bring all that before him. We can bring those to Jesus. We can bring those to our Heavenly Father. And, you know, no matter how tough or how hard the situation is, God is always with you, with me, with his followers. He's always with us. And, you know, there's, it's, there will be times where it gets really hard and really difficult. There's no doubt. But always know that he is faithful. He is with you. And he is with you on your journey. You know, you, may, you, you might, for a long time, you might not even know what you want to do in your life. Right? How you want to serve God, how you want to serve the people, the community, your families, your loved ones. Um, you might not even know what you want to be when you grow up, you know, for a long time. But, you know, that's part of the journey. And regardless of what we, be, what we do or who we become, the most important thing is that we are in this, we're walking this journey, not alone, but with our Heavenly Father. Okay? All right. So, um, so that the, for the first day, for the first week of this month of commitment, this is uh, what I wanted to touch on, uh, the basics, right? Something that um, as followers of Jesus, when we look at committing our lives to Jesus, we need to realize whatever we do in our life every day, you know, we're, we're not just doing whatever you want or, you know, we're not alone. But our whole life, every day, you know, whether it's our jobs, whether we're a student, whether we're, you know, we have to study, whether we go to church or hang out, this life that we live, our whole life needs to be committed to Jesus. Okay, all right, so with that, um, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Um, for those of you who, go, who are going to small group, I hope you guys, um, you know, enjoy your time together and learn together, you know, and just share with one another. And as we go on, we'll continue talking about commitment for this month. And so let me just pray for you, and I'll see you all next week. Heavenly Father, thank you for the fact that we can come and just worship you, and that you're not just a God who's distant and who just you know doesn't care about us, but you're a God who wants to have a relationship with all of us, every day that our life is a journey not alone but a journey where you are with us every step of the way and that's why you sent your one and only son jesus to die for us so that we might be saved from our sins that we might be in relationship with you so even though it can be difficult and hard at times we pray that we will continue to put our faith and trust in you and that we know that you work for our good always and that you want what is best for us. So we thank you, we love you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil ones. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.